Perplexity AI is a combination of search engine and AI assistant. That all comes together in this nice, simple, clean user experience. But if you dig down a little bit beneath that simplicity, it's got some advanced features that you really need to know about. So in this video, I'm gonna go through all those features, as well as how to use the new Claude 3 model, which apparently can beat GPT-4 in most benchmarks. Let's start with a profile feature, because there's a setting in here that most people don't know about. So keep in mind the profile is a global setting and it's going to apply anytime you interact across the entire application. And this is going to guide the AI, but I don't use it exactly the way they suggest. What I'm using it for is more business research and productivity use cases. So I just put in here structured responses and concise bullet points. And I find it actually really helps a lot. So you'll see later on when I get some responses, it likes to just put them really succinct bullet points, which is how I like the data coming back. But the cool thing is, it's actually, if you look at the top right here, it's got this pause button. And if you pause this, it's not gonna, it's not gonna use this profile information anymore. It's gonna just use the local information you have inside your collections, so which I'll show you in a second. Usually day to day, I'll just keep it active. And then when I wanna do some more specialized research, I'll pause it and then overwrite it in the collection. So let's move next to collections because they're really powerful and they're great for organization. So let's just add a new collection here. You can think of these kind of like an AI agent because it does a very specific task very well. So let's call this one SEO article generator and give it an emoji. And then actually the important part is really the AI prompt because it's gonna take this AI prompt and inject it into every kind of interaction we have with this collection. This one I'm gonna say, you are a marketing expert specializing in SEO articles, include optimized titles, meta description, and H2s. And then we can just use this collection by just saying, give me an SEO outline for a beginner's guide to yoga. So let's say we have a yoga studio and we wanna have this article. It's kind of like a beginner's guide to yoga that could bring new customers in. So because we selected the pro search, it's gonna ask us for a kind of a follow-up question of what we're trying to do here. If you want this article more focused on weight loss or stress release or flexibility, you could put that in here. I'm just gonna say skip for now. So now it's producing this really good article that's really SEO optimized with all the essential yoga poses for beginners, benefits of yoga practice. And the way it's coming up with everything here is it's using the search engine part of it to come up with sources for all this. So if you go back up to the top here, we see these are all the sources and that's kind of bringing the data in and then AI is actually transforming it into this nice article. And a cool feature is if you click on the three dots at the bottom of the article and say view sources, if there's any of these sources you don't want influencing your article, you can actually just remove them from here. So let's say we didn't want this one about the 10 yoga poses for weight loss. We can just check that and say remove. Now it's gonna rewrite the article excluding that source. So the content will be different based on what sources you have as input. Those are actually a really powerful feature on how you can really fine tune what you're looking for and go deep by reading through the sources and then taking out the ones you don't want. One thing you might run into by using the default settings is sometimes the information that comes back with the sources it comes back with are just other content on the internet that's already marketing material. So you're kind of trying to take a copy of a copy. And that's where I find this focus button actually is really powerful. So you click on this, it's actually gonna let you narrow down where you're looking for your content. So you could just have it searching academic papers for the sources or the computational knowledge engine with uh, Wolfram Alpha. But the three I use the most are writing, YouTube, and Reddit. And what writing is, is you can think of this basically chat GPT without any web searching. So all the knowledge is just contained to the model you're using. But you can also use this with Claude 3, which I'll show you in a second. But the other ones are YouTube and Reddit. And I like to use Reddit a lot because it tends to give you more just organic kind of content, what just people are talking about naturally. It's not taking sources from marketing materials, taking sources from real people's threads. So now that we've selected Reddit, let's just run that again. And we see now our sources are totally different and we can actually go through and look at them and see what people are saying. So I think using the Reddit and the YouTube focus makes it a little bit more authentic what you're getting back. Another really cool thing is if you take the YouTube focus, not only does it go through all the video transcripts and give you the ones that are the most relevant, it actually sometimes shows you exactly what section of the video is taking the content from. So it gives you the timestamps right in the sourcing. So once you have your sources and your focus all dialed in, the next really cool feature is the ability to rewrite. So you see at the bottom of the response has a rewrite button. Now I can actually rewrite this article using any of the supported AI models. You do need the pro version for this. And the first link in the description, I'll put a promo code that gets you $10 off your first month. So it's basically half price your first month if you wanna try the pro version out. But the nice thing is they add the new models really quickly. So for example, Anthropic added Claude 3 just yesterday and it's supposed to already outperform GPT-4 in most benchmarks. We'll see if that's true or not, if that's just marketing. But it's really nice that I have this available to me right away. So let's just rewrite this article using Claude 3. Claude models have a reputation for being really good at SEO. And I can see this already. It's actually doing a much better job than GPT-4 did with the same sources. And for all the sourcing, it's giving me the timestamps and giving me lots of SEO data as well. My first impression of the Claude 3, I'm very impressed with it. I think I'm gonna change this to be my default one. And a bonus feature, if you look at the bottom left-hand side of the, under the download, if you click on that, it actually gives you four different options. And you can just install 
the app on your phone if you want. But what I've been actually been really using a lot of lately is using the Chrome AI Companion. So you can use Perplexity if you're just browsing a website and you can ask it to summarize that website. It can also make it your default search so you can replace Google if you want. I did this on one of my browsers. So I have one that still is Google and then one that defaults right to Perplexity. So I can just type in searches really quickly. I'm actually using more of the Perplexity one lately. This is a really cool product. I definitely recommend you check it out. At least try the free version and see if you like it. They have a lot of momentum behind them. I think their valuation's just gone over a billion dollars. So I think I'll keep hearing more and more about Perplexity going to the future. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you're having an amazing day. And I'll talk to you in the next one.